Now we have come to the final step of our workflow for clustering cells and finding market genes for the clusters. So in this video, you will learn what is a market gene, what aspects of single cell RNA-seq data make it quite difficult to do differential expression analysis to find these genes, and why we want to filter out genes prior to statistical testing. So what is a market gene? Well, here on the right-hand side, we have a UMAP visualization of clusters of cells. So altogether, we have here nine clusters, and the cells are colored according to the cluster they belong to. On the left-hand side, we have exactly the same cells, but now we have colored them based on the expression level of this particular gene. And as you can see, this gene is expressed uh, highly in this cluster, which is cluster 3, whereas there is very little expression in the other cells. So we can say that this uh, gene is a good market gene for this cluster. So finding market genes is, is challenging because the single cell RNA-seq data is noisy. The starting material is, is very low. Hence, we get low counts. Uh, we also get high dropout rates. So there are many genes that are expressed, but we don't detect the expression. And there are also amplification biases and uneven sequencing depth. There are different types of tests. The default in Sera and in Chipster is the non-parametric test, the Wilcoxon Ranksum test. Uh, but it has the limitation that it can fail in the presence of many tied values. So when there are when many genes get the same rank. And this is of course the case here because we have many dropouts or zeros in the data. Then there are methods which are specific for single cell data, such as MAST. These methods can take advantage of the large number of samples uh, for each group. So effectively now, uh, so a cluster is considered as, as one group, and then you have many, many cells in that cluster, so many samples. MAST can account for uh, the stochastic dropouts and also by model expression distribution. So here you can see examples of uh, distributions of the expression values, and as you can see, they are not nicely normal. You have all sorts of shapes, including this bimodal shape. Uh, then there are also methods for bulk or total RNA-seq that you may have used, such as DSEQ2. So these tests are based on negative binomial distribution, and they seem to work okay for UMI data. However, DSEQ2 is actually very slow uh, if you use all the cells uh, in your data set. So we have actually disabled that, but it's available for comparing uh, gene expression between two clusters. And one thing to remember is that you should not filter genes uh, prior to running DSEQ2 because uh, DSEQ2 actually models the dispersion of a gene by borrowing information from other genes, which are expressed at similar level. So just to remind you how the default method, the Wilcoxon Ranksum test works. So here we have expression values for one gene, gene A, in uh, cluster one and cluster two. So we take these expression values and put them in a table in the increasing order. And then we, we give ranks. So here you can see that we have two expression values which are the same. So we don't rank them one and two, but both get one and a half. And it's this kind of tied situations that uh, can make it hard for Wilcoxon if there are many of them. Now afterwards then we uh, effectively replace the expression values by this rank values, and then we calculate the sum of the rank values for each cluster. 
then we insert this uh, rank sum values to the formula. So the U statistics is calculated like this. So there is the rank sum. And then there is a number that is um, proportional to the number of of uh, of gene uh, of of um, measurements in that cluster. So when uh, here we have four four cells, so we have four uh, measurements for that particular gene. So when we put the numbers in, we get eleven point five and four point five. We get the smaller U statistics number and compare that to the uh, critical U value. And we can realize that our U statistics value is higher than the U critical value. So there is no significant difference of expression for this particular gene between these two clusters. And this slide was kindly contributed by Bishwa Kimira from the University of Helsinki. Now, in this kind of situation, when we test thousands of genes, it is possible that we get a good p-value, in other words, a small p-value, just by chance. So that would mean that we get a false positive, we call a gene differential expressed, when it's actually not. And for this, uh, people have developed methods to correct for this. So this is called multiple testing correction, which you might be familiar with from other contexts, uh, such as microarrays or, or bulk rna -seq. And so the basic idea is that we uh, multiply the p-value by a number that is uh, relative to the number of tests we, we run, in other words, the number of genes we have in our data set. Now, in the context of single cell RNA seq, SERA uses the Bonferroni correction, where you simply multiply the raw p value by the number of genes tested. Now, we want to have small p values, so we want to reduce this number. Because obviously, if you multiply with a big number, your, your p-value is not going to be that good. So we can achieve this by testing less genes. And of course, filtering also speeds up testing. So then if we look at the actual parameters, so here we have uh, so this tool, clustering and detection of cluster market genes, does, does many things, but these particular parameters here are relevant for finding the market genes. So first of all, you have to tell which test you want to run. And then for filtering, you have these two options. So you can limit testing to those genes which are expressed in at least 10% uh, of the cells in, in, in the cluster, uh, all, all the other cells, or you can limit the testing uh, to genes which show at least this big fold change between the two groups. And note that the fold change is now in the natural logarithm scale, not in the log2 scale as, as it usually is in other uh, tools. The result table looks like this. So you have the gene name and then various columns. And this is the important column here. So the adjusted P value. So this one is uh, the one corrected using the Bonferroni method. And then you have the cluster number here. Now you should note that the output table uh, contains markers for all the clusters. But if you are interested in a particular cluster, you can filter that table using the tool fill the table by column value. So you need to tell which column uh, you use for filtering. Then you have to say if the first column has a title. So this is maybe a bit tricky question, but if we go back, you can see that here the first column did not have a title. And this is because this table comes from R, and R uses this column as row names. 
fixed. But in Chipster we have different kinds of tables, so hence you have to define this here. Um, then you need to tell so what, what value you are after. So let's say we are interested in cluster number three, so we add a three here. And then uh, do we want numbers higher than three, smaller than three, or equal to three? So here we say equal to because we are interested in results for cluster number three. We can also visualize the cluster market genes. So for example, we can color uh, these knee plots or Yuma plots with expression level of a particular gene. And you can also produce violent plots like this. So for example, here we see that this gene is a very good marker for cluster number two. It is important to realize that there are actually two analysis tools in Chipster which can detect uh, differentially expressed genes between clusters. So there is the one that I just showed you, which is called clustering and detection of cluster market genes. So this tool does a lot of things. First, it performs the actual clustering, then it visualizes the clusters using DSNI and UMAP, and then it detects cluster market genes by comparing one cluster to the cells in all the other clusters. And then it comes up with that big table of market chains for every cluster, which you can filter. This tool does not include the DSEQ2 test because it would be very, very slow. Then there is another tool called Compare Clusters. This tool does actually only the differential expression analysis. So you should run the, this uh, clustering tool first and then give that R object as an input here. And here uh, you can specify what kind of comparison you want to make. So you can, for example, compare gene expression between just two clusters. So you define the clusters. Or you can also do the same as here. So one cluster, <clears throat> one cluster versus all the other cells. Um, as a result table, you get a, a table of genes, but you should note that all the genes are there, so you still need to filter it by the adjusted p value. And now this tool does include the DSEQ2 test, because you typically run this tool for a smaller number of cells, since it's only a couple of clusters. And let's have a look how the parameters for this tool look like. So here you, first of all, you need to specify the clusters you want to compare with. So now here we have one and all the others, but you could equally well say here two versus three or seven versus one or whatever. And then you again have the same parameters for limiting the testing in different ways and the test to use.